Hello everyone! In my videos I always do a lot of tests with the analog sticks and some viewers might not even know what's the meaning of those tests. So in today's video I'm gonna explain what are those tests and what to look for on a good analog stick. Starting from this example, what you see here is a joystick without any cardinal snapping. The stick has full precision when moving around the cardinal directions. And here's an example of what a bad stick looks like. I like to call this dead zones in the axis, but it's also called cardinal stamping. This is terrible because it removes a lot of precision and makes aiming a pain in the ass. Even moving forward, the stick always tries to snap you forward on a straight line. It messes up your movement and it's not good. The reason why it happens is because of this. Here you can see the raw input. This represents the raw analog stick movements. And on the other side you see the edited movement with the dead zone applied. The goal of the dead zone is to make the stick centered, because the raw input won't be aligned 100% of the time. And this can result in joystick drift. The cardinal snapping occur when they program the dead zone wrong. By just adding a dead zone on the X and Y axis, without taking in consideration the position of the other axis. Another mistake when programming the dead zones is to make the edited input jump to the raw position as soon as it leaves the dead zone, as it happens here. The correct way to program a dead zone is like this. The white dot is the raw input and the green dot is the edited input. And notice here that as soon as the white dot leaves the dead zone, the green input starts in the first position and it catches up the white dot. This dead zone code is internal on each controller and some controllers may offer an additional mode to remove the dead zone. This is called the no dead zone mode, where all of the code for editing the stick input is removed and you have the raw stick input. This is good for some shooting games where you can adjust the dead zone manually and players can tweak the dead zone to make them as small as possible. But also this is a bit problematic because without a dead zone, joystick drift can and will happen. Like here, this is enough to give you drift in a game. So usually the controllers that enable this has a toggle function or a button combination. And finally we have the circularity. This controller here has a perfect circularity test. You can see that the circle is completely blue. Usually modern games are programmed with a circular analog input. The analog sticks the circle and the game reads the commands in a circle so it's a one to one match. But if your controller does not have a good circularity, you have this result. These red areas means that the stick will reach maximum input before reaching the physical end on the controller. So the game will read your input up until this point and all of this extra movement is not detected. This also means that when moving diagonally, the acceleration of the movement will be faster. So why some controllers have an option to turn off the circularity and have a square range on the stick? Well, this is because some old games are still programmed with a square input, and having a circular range in a game programmed with a square input will actually decrease your movement as well. This is the case of Rocket League, where using a controller with a square range gives you a big advantage. This movement here is done by jumping and holding the stick in the diagonals. If your controller has a circular range, it won't reach the maximum input, resulting in less movement. And finally, we have this weird central magnetism. I have seen it in a few controllers, and I believe that the reason for this is incorrect coding of the stick dead zones. It is better than the cardinal snapping, but still not correctly optimized. And that's it! Now you know what to look for when testing analog sticks on a controller. As always, Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.